Hi, this is Kevin from The Maths Tourist, and in this video we're looking at question 7 from the Oxford Maths Admissions Test from 2019, one of the computer science questions, a pretty tricky one I think, and particularly hard this one to write the answer down really precisely even once you've got the idea of the question. So I hope this is useful uh, in your preparation for this exam and it helps you uh, write better answers to these questions. Um, this is the last one of the paper, so that means I've finished the whole paper um, in time for the uh, 2020 exam as promised. So there'll be a playlist of the whole paper that will be linked below and you can see all of the other videos I've done on other map papers and actually now some Tamua papers that are quite similar for the short answer questions if you're interested um, over at the Mathsaurus website or on the YouTube channel uh, here. Um, so please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um, and I will get on with the question. So this question says we've got two identical black boxes, each with an n-digit display. Okay, um, and there's these two buttons, one of which resets the box to where it starts, and another one that starts it cycling through this series of values uh, given by this function f, right? So maybe it's a three, if it was a three-digit display, it's going to start with zero, so zero, 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 and then that would be our x zero. And when I do f of x zero, I get x one, and you know who knows what that is? Perhaps it's two, three, four. But then when I do f of x1, I get some other some other number, right? And it just keeps cycling around. But of course it could be a larger number of digits than this. So, um, okay, so in part one, it says explain briefly why there must exist integers i and j uh, with xi equals xj. And actually I've written something here already um, a second ago. Uh, so if uh, the idea here is that well n is finite, so the number of total number of possibilities is finite. Okay, so uh, so there's a maximum possible number of different uh, possibilities for the display. So that means that eventually uh, we're going to get some sort of some sort of repeat, which is exactly what this is saying that we get x i equals x j for some uh, i and j bigger than zero, uh, where i is not equal to j. Right, eventually. If it was three digits here, after a thousand presses, we must at some you know there's no, we, there aren't a thousand different there aren't more than a thousand different numbers so um, that could appear. So at some point we get a repeat, and that's what we've got to say there. Um, oh, the the other important thing at the end here it says that um, we can't write anything down as we go along. So at some point later in this question, you know we're not going to be able to rely on actually kind of writing down every uh, output we get, but we can use these two boxes to. Um, to do some matching, but we'll see that later. Anyway, um, right, in part two, it says show that if xi equals xj, then xi plus s equals xj uh, plus s for any s greater than or equal to zero. Well, um, okay, if xi equals xj, okay, then, well, what would xi plus s be? Well, that would just be applying the function f s times to xi, but xi is xj, and this is a, a deterministic function, so this is just the same as applying uh, f s times to xj, and that's just uh, x uh, j plus s then. Okay, so uh, fairly straightforward. In part three, it starts to get trickier. It says let m be the smallest number such that x m appears more than once in the sequence and let p greater than zero be the smallest number such that xm equals xm plus p and show that if i is greater than or equal to m and k is greater than or equal to zero then xi plus kp equals xi and I think um, you know at this point you might want to just kind of think about what's going on here right so um, so so how does how does this machine work okay we're going to start with x0 we're going to press the button we'll get x1 maybe then we get x2 and then we get x3 and then we get x4 and um, the direction here is not going to mean anything, by the way, but I'm just trying to create a cycle here at some point. So I get x6, uh, then I'm going to get to x7, and then at some point I'm going to get back to a value I've already had. So, of course, the cycle could be a lot longer than this, but um, this is the idea, right? So I might not get the first values that I see from the box in the cycle, but eventually I do hit some sort of cycle, right? So in this example, right, this x3 would be the xm, and then p is the length of the cycle, right? So it says that 
xm equals xm plus p. So in this example, that's saying x3 is equal to x3 plus 5 or x8, right? So we do get that cycle at some point. So this is the image that I will have in mind. And I found when I worked through this question that having this sort of schematic diagram just written down really helped me just look at it and think about what was going on in this question. Maybe you can even use three and five to sort of test out some more general cases if you want to. Right, okay, so I've still got to write this out properly though. So I need to show that xi plus kp is xi. So what does this mean? Okay, well, I mean, so x i plus kp means that I'm going to apply um, the function f kp times to xi, right? So if i is greater than or equal to m, that means that I'm in the cycle somewhere. And so when I apply the function p times, I get back to wherever I was in the cycle, right? So if I think of this uh, f applied kp times as being uh, you know, fp, fp, and then I'm going to do this uh, k times, right? Well, fp of xi must be equal to, uh, must be equal to xi because we're in the cycle, right? And then, okay, well, then I get xi and then I apply fp again and I still get xi. So I end up with, uh, so I end up with uh, xi, right? So again, if you haven't got this diagram, you know, or you know, you might want to add a few words to the um, to the uh, working here to explain what's going on, but um, but that's the idea, right? So now it says, given integers i and j greater than or equal to zero, uh, so that x i equals x j if and only if i is greater than or equal to m and j minus i is a multiple of p, um, and there's a hint here. Um, so, well. Okay, uh, so it's an if and only if statement. So we need to prove it in uh, both directions. So let's do uh, the easy direction first, right? Okay, so let's suppose that j minus i is a multiple of p, right? So j minus i equals kp. Um, right, then in that case, xi, uh, sorry, xj, right? Well, j is i plus kp, so that's x i plus kp. But x i plus kp is just equal to x i. That's an exact application of the previous part of this question. All right? Just look back, look back to part three if you need to there. Right, but that's kind of the easy way around, right? I'm saying, you know, yes, if j minus i is a multiple of p, then yes, uh, x i is equal to x j. Right, so we want to show the the converse statement here. So conversely, now let's suppose that xi equals xj, right? Um, and then right, to try and get a contradiction here, let's suppose that j minus i is not a multiple of p, right? And then we'll show that that's not possible, right? That it leads to a contradiction. So it actually must be a multiple of p. So if j minus i is not a multiple of p, then that means that uh, right then, that means that j minus i, I must be able to write as k times p plus a, say, where a is like the, the remainder, right? So a here is going to be between 1 and p minus 1, okay? So it's what we get left over from this division. Okay, well, then we could say that, uh, again, xj this time, well, this time it's going to be x i plus k p plus a, right? Which is just f a of x i plus k p. But we know x i plus k p is x i, so this is f a of x i, right? Okay, but if x j equals x i, that means we have x i is equal to f a of x i, right? But this can't be the case really because m is the smallest uh, value. Sorry, not m. Uh, p is the smallest. P is the smallest 
value such that um, you know such that would have x i equals x i plus p, and our a here because it's between one and p minus one is strictly less than p. So this is our contradiction, if you like, and uh, so it must be that j minus i is a multiple of p. Okay. So, I mean, you know, there's an element of you know once you've got the idea of these, some of these things seem reasonably obvious. So there's a you know there, there there is an element in some proofs like this where we're kind of really trying to you know make the obvious or or something that we've kind of figured out more rigorous, right? So we need to try and construct an argument of this form. It doesn't have to be written exactly like this, it's just got to convey the idea accurately. Right, part five, it says you conduct an experiment where once we've reset both boxes to their starting values of zero, um, we repeatedly press the button B on one box and then B twice on the other box and just compare the displays after doing that, right? So we're gonna basically find the first time where they're equal, so when uh, so if I've pressed it twice on the second box, I'll get x to you. Uh, if I if I do that u times, and I'll have x u on the first box. It says what relates the value of u to the unknown values of m and p? Um, I think there's something slightly unclear about this question about exactly what they want us to to say here. Um, but uh, we can certainly look back to the previous parts of the question. Well, okay, uh, we've got x u equals x to u. Right, so that means from the previous part that 2u minus u, think of this as i and j in the previous one, um, that's equal to u, so that must be, uh, um, and u must be a multiple of p. Okay, um, and in particular, um, I suppose we could also say, if we want to, perhaps that u has to be greater than or equal to m. Right, but in particular, if I think for the full marks here, we want to say something like, um, u is the smallest multiple of p, okay, that is at least m. Right, so again, it might be helpful to go back to our schematic here. So if, uh, so like in this case, right, what, when do we get the first time that, you know, x u is equal to x to u? Well, uh, certainly x3 is not uh, equal to x6, x4 is not equal to x8, ah, but x4 is equal to x10, look, so it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So, so basically what I'm saying is once we're in the cycle, so once, uh, so once, um, once we're bigger than m, as soon as I get a multiple of p in the cycle, um, then that one's going to work, right? Because, uh, because necessarily, whichever one of these is a multiple of p, then I times it by two, it's still multiple of p. I'm still at the same point in the cycle, if that makes sense. But imagine if, you know, if this actually, if I had eight values here and I got to x8 first, x9, x10, again, then this would be the first time where I double it will, uh, so it'll be x10 and then x20, um, the, f the first time that property holds, because x5 here is outside of the cycle, so it's not necessarily so that one's not going to be equal to x10. Okay, um, so I think as these are quite hard questions to get really precise. So, you know, to, to get the full marks here, I think, is, is challenging. But you can at least give something like the idea. Right, okay, now in part six it says, once u is known, what experiment would you perform to determine the value of m? Okay, well, I think clearly we're going to start by, um, by, reset, by resetting uh, both boxes, okay, so we're going to effectively press A on both boxes, right, and um, now what I want to do next is let's press B uh, U times on uh, one box, right, and now the state of the box is then we'll have X U on the first one and X zero on the next one, and these questions are where it's important to remember, by the way, in the first part of the question where it says we have no pencil and paper, so we're not allowed to kind of ever remember the values uh, that we see as we go along, basically. And um, we've got to get to a point where we can compare the two displays. All right, so uh, so what do I do now? Well, I start pressing uh, B on both boxes. So I get X U plus one and X one, X U plus two and X two. And then at some point, I'm gonna find X U plus M and 
xm, right? And this will be the first, uh, you know, until they're equal, and that will be the point uh, where we found m because we know um, uh, actually uh, the definition that xm is the smallest number um, that appears more than once in the sequence. So, uh, so the first time I get this will tell us what the value of m is again write a few more words out to describe that process. And in part seven, it says, okay, once u and m are known, what experiment uh, do we do? Well, this time, okay, I'm gonna reset both, and then I'm gonna press b m times on both, and that will get the state of the boxes to be x m and x m. And this time I'm going to leave the second box alone and just press uh, B uh, on the first box. And we'll do that repeatedly. And, you know, P is the length of the cycle, so I just need to count how long it takes me to get from uh, this XM to see the same again. So once these are equal, right, uh, once these are equal, then we know what P is. I'm just because I'm allowed to count how many times I press the uh, button on each box, obviously. So I hope that was useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out all of the other videos I've made on map papers, and I've started to do some of the Tamua papers which have similar uh, questions to the short answer questions for the mat, so you might find those useful as well if you're preparing those and fit for those or, or taking both exams or something. Anyway. Um, so I hope this series has been useful. Please put in the comments if you've got other ways of doing these questions or anything else you'd like to see. And if you're taking the exam this year or in any other years, I'd love to hear from you and to hear how it went and uh, any feedback you, you get from it. And uh, perhaps perhaps you're now studying at Oxford and watching these uh, videos. I'd, I'd love to hear if you've uh, found them uh, helpful and you're studying there now. Okay, uh, so that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video.